Miss Plina, how are you? Oh, I'm good. How was how your weekend? You? Amazing? It's fantastic. That's Can't all I complain. like to hear. All right, what do you got for us first? Gold band. Yeah. So, leaders of G7 countries plan to announce a ban on gold imports from Russia, the, lat the latest in a series of sanctions the club hopes will further hit Russia's economy over its invasion of Ukraine. So there's a couple of things that I think is funny here. If you put the word gold ban together, gold like, ban? like if it was one word, like gold ban. and then you switch out the B with an M, then it spells Goldman. <laughs> That's not funny. No, it's funny because <laughs> this is exactly what goes on is all these large institutions like Goldman and others are participating in this whole gold market. Now, one of the folks uh, that I was talking to over the weekend, uh, Danny over from Cash App, a software engineer, uh, he had a really interesting theory. He said, look, the gold bugs for years and years have been predicting this idea that physical gold, the actual gold itself, actually is participating in a fractional reserve system where many of these exchanges have taken the gold and then they've essentially levered it up. So sometimes there's as much as 100x the number of paper claims on the actual gold itself. And so in a fractional reserve system, just like in a traditional bank, if there's a run for people to get the asset, if all of a sudden people start saying, hey, give me the gold, give me my gold, give me my gold, and there's not enough physical gold, they can't give you the gold. And so in that scenario, what would drive it is that the price would be exploding upwards. People would want the gold and not actually want cash. So when the G7 comes in and they ban the import of Russian gold, by the way, gold is gold. It just comes from Russia. It's not Russian gold. It's gold from Russia. Uh, but when the gold is not able to be imported from Russia, that cuts off a certain portion. And all of a sudden people start to say, man, if I want gold exposure, am I just getting the paper claims on the gold or am I actually getting the gold itself? And so it could potentially, there is no guarantee of it, it could potentially, though, start to lead to people saying, I want the physical gold, give me the physical gold. Remember the uh, viral video on the internet from a couple years ago? Where the gold at? You ever seen that video? No. Yeah, a leprechaun up in them trees. You never seen it? Oh, I've oh, seen man. I've seen it, I've seen Come it. Come on. I'm Did gonna get a backhoe. Get up in that tree. That's where he said, where the gold at? Okay, okay. That's what people are asking right now. Where is the gold? And right now, we're about to find out where is the gold. Okay. So that's why the band is important. Cool. Layoffs. So not less, cool. Not cool. Less than six months ago, all these Wall Street banks were celebrating. They were on a hiring binge of all the IPOs, all the things that were happening. And now... Now, thanks to a confluence of factors that have cast a pall over the markets, I don't know what that means, um, broad-based job cuts loom for the first time at banks since 2019. Wow. Do we know if they're cutting just the mortgage departments or if they're cutting across the bank? I think it's across. Okay. I saw some headlines last week that people were laying off uh, members of their mortgage departments, which would make yeah. sense because if mortgage rates are going up, and less people are taking mortgages, that means that the revenue of that specific department is likely going down. But also, like, not a ton of companies are going to go public. So the people working so on So investment the IPOs. banking, yes. There's a whole bunch of things, but you just got to go sector by sector within a bank and say who is being affected the most. Those are likely to be places where they're going to cut first because they're trying to balance out revenue with expenses. It That's just how shows, you get to profitability. It just shows how quickly things can change well, in turn. Uh, there's a direct line between monetary and fiscal policy that led to an asset bubble. That asset bubble then led to high inflation. Uh, that high inflation led to the Federal Reserve trying to talk tough and get tighter financial conditions. Those tighter financial conditions led to less revenue in certain sectors for a bank, which then means that the bank, preparing for a potential downturn, has to lay people off. Now, you can call that a straight line or you can call that a little squiggly line. But there is a line between Federal Reserve policy and people getting jobs or losing jobs in the real economy, including at banks. And that's what we're seeing right here, is that if people are scared about us going into some sort of economic downturn, then they cut jobs. That's what happens. Yeah. Do you agree? Yes. And speaking of banks, investment banks, Credit Suisse was convicted of failing to prevent money laundering by a Bulgarian, of course it's got to be a Bulgarian, a Bulgarian cocaine trafficker in the first ever criminal conviction of a major Swiss lender in the country's history. So Credit Suisse, I feel like lately they've been just kind of not able to just, I don't know, they've, they've been all over the place. Why are you going after the Bulgarians? I like the Bulgarians. Not, not the drug traffickers. <laughs> so 
Oh, it's a woman? This is interesting. Wow. Wow. You she thought was- it was a man automatically? Why? Because he's doing bad things? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So are you ready? <laughs> yeah. One of the pieces that's very interesting about, let's just label it all as money laundering or nefarious activities Mm -hmm. at banks, is that banks, in many cases, if they were investigators, like literally they were law enforcement, an investigation could take months, could take years to actually come up with some of this stuff. And so there is a thought process that a bank doesn't have to uh, go through the level of detail that a financial investigator or law enforcement has to go to, but they do have to do some level of cursory uh, due diligence in order to be able to say with a straight face, we do not believe that this person is engaging in any nefarious or illegal activity. We think this is a person that we want to do business with. Now, one of the things that has come out of the 2008 uh, financial crisis and many other regulations that followed uh, in the ensuing years is that a lot of banks, what they would do is they would continue to do business with groups that Depending on who you ask in the bank, they might say, ah, they're good. But they'd be like, ah, you know, they, they, we, we work with all kinds of different people. Everyone's on a spectrum. And they would kind of talk it away. And so when that happens, uh, what the banks would do is they would just flag tons and tons of transactions or tons and tons of clients. They would basically flood the compliance departments or the overseers yeah. with all these flags. And then so if anything it later on came up to be an issue, they'd be like, well, we flagged it. Well, if you flag a lot And you're doing it without actually trying to identify the highest risk. You're just flagging anything. Yes, you are covering your butt, but are you actually going ahead and uh, trying to solve the problem? Probably not. What's interesting here is that they went after the bank. Every bank has engaged in this stuff. There's been the uh, Mexican cartels. There's been plenty of money laundering. Like all these different things happen. But to actually convict a bank is a pretty big deal. Well, I was right, by the way, that Credit Suisse has been all over the place because it says it has been struggling with a series of scandals that have sent its shares to near record lows, and it may face a second criminal indictment in an unrelated case later this year. I So, yes, obviously that is true. That is a fact. But I think a lot of the banks are going through this. We saw recently uh, J.P. Morgan. They got uh, um, fined. Uh, for some metal manipulations, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, There's a couple of other things that have happened where uh, banks are now being held accountable to some degree. But I think there's a lot of folks who say, look, this is nothing. Like, there's so many more things that they should be held accountable for. And then, of course, there are some folks who, um, who continue to say to themselves, if you're the bank, could you actually figure this out? Like if somebody shows up and says, hey, I have a business, uh, my business has X dollars in it. And they say, what line of business are you in? You tell them you've never been convicted of a crime before. You've never been uh, in trouble before. At what point right. is enough of the diligence? And I don't have that answer. That's why they're banks and I'm not. Uh, but You are in a suit, but you're not a bank. Yeah. Well, if I was in the bank and in a suit, everyone would be in trouble. Uh, but what I do think is important here is to understand that uh, you've got to ask the bank, are you just simply trying to check all the boxes so you can can continue to do business, get fees? It's just a really hard business. Well, or are you trying to solve the problem? It's just a really hard problem to solve. I think that that's a very fair position to take. Yes. All right, let's talk about OpenAI. Why this one? Uh, Interesting. So you know OpenAI, how they had GPT-3 and people were like, oh my God, this like machine can write sentences. Explain what GPT-3 is. It's like a, a machine learning natural language processing unit, <laughs> product, <laughs> I don't know. That, that, okay. that was actually way better anyway. than like 90% of people. If you ask them, they'd be like, oh, it's artificial intelligence. No, well, it's not. everyone was like freaking out because GPT-3 could like write articles and finish sentences, whatever. Now it has a cousin called Dolly 2, and it's a cousin trained on text and images. And it's causing a similar stir online when it began whipping up surreal images of astronauts riding horses. And more recently, it has learned to play Minecraft after watching 70,000 hours of video showing people playing the game on YouTube. This is wild because Minecraft is a strategy game. It's not like Snake. Snake. Yes and no. Snake is a strategy game. Because when, when you try to understand how they're doing this stuff, it's still machine learning. Like if a human sat there and understood what was happening and watched 70,000 hours of Minecraft on YouTube, right? they likely would be able to pick up patterns. But a human could never watch 70,000 hours of anything. Ah, uh, that's not Okay, except true. you. 
<laughs> you know, you just do you know down. who we need on here? Yeah. We need our 11 year old analyst, Jacob. <laughs> he would have opinions on Minecraft. He, he would say, I've watched 70,000 hours on YouTube. Uh, so in some way, like that's all the technology is doing is it's just learning it's the learning. patterns, right? Hence the uh, machine learning. And then what's unique about this one is uh, putting text and images together. So you can basically just say, you know, create an image. Uh, what was the example? Like uh, with astronauts on horses. And then it understands astronauts, horses, and like, and it'll come up and it'll basically create that image. And so when you start to break down how they do this stuff, it's not hard to understand like what the theoretical uh, kind of um, operation is. The hard part is actually making it do it. And that's what's so impressive about well, this. And, and the other impressive part is that like, you know, when it plays chess, unlike chess, uh, Minecraft has any number of possible objectives, progress is less linear, and deep reinforcement learning algorithms are usually left spinning their wheels. It's a strategy. Well, I guess chess is too, but like it's more It's less it's defined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so really, right, I mean, obviously chess, you can play the computer, like that was an original version, and then you kind of just go through, uh, and they're going to get less and less defined, and eventually uh, the idea of artificial intelligence is for it to be, quote, unquote, intelligent. Will it be able to actually think for itself? And there's a lot of folks like, man, that is amazing. I can't wait to do that. I can't wait to have that in our lives. And there's a lot of other people like, <laughs> have you met people? Like, I don't know if you necessarily want there to be artificial intelligence that we have no idea uh, okay, how well, to control. Let me tell you about the next artificial intel intelligence that will blow your mind. Um, Amazon Alexa, the latest iteration, could sound eerily familiar. They have figured out how to make it sound like you're deceased loved ones. So technically, your deceased grandmother could read you a bedtime story. I, uh, got, I got multiple problems with Alexa. I honestly... I wait, got beef with Alexa. Well, what's your beef? Well... When we tell Alexa, be quiet. <laughs> Do you remember when she wouldn't stop? She would just play this like creepy song and you're like, stop, Alexa, stop. I've, ne I've never had. Stop. We I've had to never unplug had, her. I've never had beef with a robot <laughs> until one day. I forget what happened. Sophia you had beef was feeling with the something. Roomba. Uh, yeah, the Roomba also. Robots in my house I got beef with. There's only two robots in the house, Alexa and Roomba. They both Wait, so what's are not allowed to be Alexa? used when I'm around. Uh, no, it's like if, if they don't listen, it's frustrating. Yeah, so so Alexa literally was playing her song, and we're like, "Stop it!" We got so desperate, we had to unplug her. I was like, "All right, guess what? Checkmate, <laughs> checkmate, Alexa." But what happens when you can't unplug the robot? Uh, and hold another thing. Okay, uh, so wait, 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 can I say one thing? Yes. Um, this technology is definitely it, it's already been here to some degree. It wasn't perfect, mm -hmm. but it is accelerating. Um, you probably uh, remember a business, StatMuse, was the first time oh, I ever saw yeah, the technology. Wow. And what they essentially did um, was they went and they would do deals uh, with big sports stars. They had one with Deion Sanders, uh, one with Peyton Manning, et cetera. And you could ask this app, StatMuse, M-U-S-E, you could ask it a question. And when you asked it a question, you could say, um, how many touchdowns did Peyton Manning throw in the playoffs during his career? And when it would respond to you, Peyton Manning's voice would be the one that would respond. And Peyton Manning would basically uh, be able to read back the answer. But the way that they did that is they would take your speech when you asked the question. They would turn it into text. That text would then be analyzed. Once the text was analyzed, they would then go and get the answer, similar to how a Google would. They would pull the text-based answer. And then they would go text the speech back, but instead of it just being some robotic voice, they would actually have Peyton Manning's voice do it. And so when they did it, it sounded just like Peyton Manning. And there was all this technology as to how they blended together all the different talking points and, and made it sound more human. But you still could kind of tell it was Peyton, but kind of sort of it sounded like a robot and it was getting better. Now they got it where it just sounds like a real person. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, imagine when uh, I could send you a voice note but I didn't actually uh, create the voice note. I just typed it, and then it's read to you, but it's in my voice. But why would I want that? Uh, Anthony Siri well, is a British woman. That's all I have today. What you want to say? Listen, she sounds more sophisticated <laughs> than the American uh, robot voice. Huh? Does she, she does, not? She does, she does. Yeah, so whenever I'm talking to uh, uh, Siri, I just, you know, I'm like, oh, let me, let me get more serious for a second here. All right, what are you going to- Goodbye, gonna, friends. Do yes. you have anything that you want to tell people before I let you go? Um, yeah, I want to give a shout out to somebody in the comments. His name is Zach SG. He's been so nice to me since day one. Just throwing that out there. Thank you. I appreciate you. 
Zach, how much did you pay for that shadow? <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank All you right, very thank much. You. Appreciate Bye. it. Hey, you, did you like this video? Great. We make five of them a day and post them here on this channel. Make sure you're subscribed, like the video, and see you next time.